Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at solids of revolution. Now, when we talked about integrals, we said that integrals could be used to do two things. We said one, if we ever wanted to find the area, we could always go ahead and use the integral. This is the area bounded by the curve. And the other one, we said that if we wanted to go ahead and find the antiderivative function, then we could also go ahead and use integrals. And again, we said that this one was the definite integral. This is, of course, the indefinite integral. Now there's one last application that we're going to take a look at, and that's actually finding the volume of a solid of revolution. Now before we actually go ahead and show us how to actually go about doing this, let's make sure that we know what a solid of revolution actually refers to. Now let's just go ahead and take a very quick look at this particular graph here. Now the thing that you need to kind of, the thing that you need to keep in mind is what is the axis of revolution? So what's going to happen then is we have a curve here, let's just say that f of x is going to be equal to x. And we're going to draw that curve from 0 to 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show my axis of revolution with this symbol here. So in other words, what's happening is that this axis, which is the x-axis, is actually going to be taking this function here, it's going to spin it. If you spin it, then this line here is actually going to come out and it's going to actually create what I'm hoping that you can visualize is a cone. Okay, so if I take that line and I rotate it around, try to imagine what's actually happening, it's actually going to turn out to be a cone. Okay, so what happens then is that we can actually use integrals to go ahead and find the volume of that cone based upon the axis of revolution and given a curve over a particular interval. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at this particular cone, now I've drawn one little cut, a cross section of this particular cone, and notice that the shape that it creates is a disc. Now, what we want to do is we want to actually go ahead and determine how to actually calculate the volume of that disc. Now, the volume of a disc is basically the same thing as the volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is basically going to be the area of the base, which is going to be a circle, which is pi r squared, times it by its height. So what we have then is that if I wanted to go ahead and find the volume of this particular disc, which again is a cylinder, then what I have to do is I have to consider what the r is. The r will be the distance from the curve to the axis of rotation. Now the h in that case is going to be the height, that's going to be d of x. So now we have everything that we need in order to actually calculate the volume of this particular solid of revolution. What we can say then is that the volume is going to be the integral okay, from 0 to 3 because that's where we're starting from and that's where we're ending. And notice that we're going to use this particular value right here, right? This is the volume of the disk or the cylinder. It's going to be pi r squared h. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at r, Notice the fact that r, in this case over here, is going to change depending upon where you are in terms of your interval. So like say for example, if I was at 1, then the radius would be 1, if I'm at 2, the radius is at 2, and if I'm at 3, the radius is at 3. So notice that the radius is always changing. Being that the case, I have to always go ahead and say that this then will be the function f of x, because f of x actually refers to the distance from the axis of rotation to the curve that's always changing. So what I can say then is that the volume is then going to be the integral from 0 to 3 pi times by f of x quantity squared times by d of x because we said d of x was actually going to be the height of each one of those cylinders. So all we have to do now is go ahead and substitute for f of x and actually integrate. So I took the pi in front because that's going to be a scalar multiple. This is going to be integral from 0 to 3 x squared d of x. If I just go ahead and use my rules of anti-differentiation, then I get one third x cubed. Then I use the first fundamental theorem of calculus to go ahead and say that this is going to be one third pi times it by three cubed minus zero cubed. And what I come up with is nine pi. So hopefully you can kind of see what this cone looks like. It's going to be like that. And then it's just going to come this way and it's going to be shaped that way. And so that's what we can do with integrals is we can actually determine the volume of a solid of revolution. 
Now, what we want to do as well is we want to just check to see whether or not this is true, this is accurate. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at this, we all know how to go about finding the volume of a comb without using calculus methods. And basically, it's just going to be 1 3rd pi r squared h. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at this particular cone here, we know it's 1 3rd pi. r, in this case, would be the radius of the base, which is going to be 3. So that's 3 squared. Times it by the height, and the height of that particular cone is 3. So notice, again, we come up with 9 pi. So notice that the results are consistent. But the one thing that's going to be very important to recognize about the solids of revolution and calculating the value of that using calculus methods is that we don't have to think that this is, can only be a straight line. We can now go ahead and calculate all different types of curves and all different types of shapes for the solid of revolution based upon this function, which doesn't have to be a straight line anymore. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look a little bit more in depth of what kind of solids of revolutions that we can actually create, and hopefully you can visualize what that looks like. But the most important thing is to realize that it is all going to be based upon this formula here. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit more general. That the volume is going to be the integral from a to b of pi times by the function f of x squared d of x. Of course, assuming that your axis of rotation is the x-axis. Okay? And there you go. There's your solids of revolution. Let's hope that you can go ahead and practice some of these during class and answer any questions that you might have. Okay? Give you your best shot. See you next time. Bye-bye.